in the spirit of community, uh, we're going to start with a drum circle. Some of you have drums, a lot of you don't, but that doesn't mean that everyone can participate. So use your laps, okay? And it takes no musical experience to do any of what we're going to be doing today, okay? I'm going to share with you exactly the process we're going to do, and then we'll get right into it, okay? First, how to hold the drum. Um, all of you have drums, you see these nodules, you want to put it against the chair if you can, and then tilt it slightly away, and then if you can, cross your legs. Um, perfect. And all of you that don't have drums, you and your laps. Okay, now three ways of hitting the drum. You can hit it like a hot plate, where it comes off the drum like that. Hot plate, hot plate. Or you can hit it flat like this. Or you can cup your hands and hit it like that. And when we start, please forget everything I just said. Okay. Next is any rings. Please take off your rings, especially the ones with drums, so that you don't bend your rings. Thank you. Okay. Now the process is really simple. We're going to start with what we call the pulse beat, which is the simplest rhythm that exists in the universe. And, and then we're going to take a little journey together. And I'm just going to ask you at some point to close your eyes and relax. And then I'm going to say a phrase. And then whatever comes up for you when I say that phrase, just express it through the drums or on your lap. So in other words, if we're playing this and I say a phrase and it makes you angry, then play angry. If it makes you happy, you play happy. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. There'll be times when it sounds like complete chaos in here. That's fine. There'll be times when everyone starts playing the same rhythm at the same exact moment. OK? And um, we are ready to begin. OK? So we're going to start, well, I'll play, I'll start the pulse beat, then I'll say ready being, but the pulse beat is just this. It's just alternating hands, bump, bump. So everyone can come in now. Focus on the beat, focus on the beat, focus on the beat, focus on the beat. Now, focus on the space in between the beat. Focus on the space in between the beat. Can everyone hear me okay? Good. Focus on the space. Now relax in the space. Relax in the space. Relax in the space. Relax in the space. Now gently close your eyes. Gently close your eyes. Gently close your eyes. Good. And relax in the space. Just allow your body to, rela to really let go. And relax. You can feel your mind. It's going to the conscious and unconscious mind. Picture it as a feather, and we're just gonna float down. The conscious and unconscious mind is just gonna float down past your eyes, past your nose, past your mouth, past your jaw. It's gonna travel down the neck, it's going down, 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 down. You can feel it just sink into your body, the conscious and unconscious mind just sinking into your body. And I'm going to say a phrase, and whatever comes up for you, just allow yourself to express it on the drums. You just relax into that. And the phrase is, turning I into we. Turning I into we. What does that mean? What does that mean? I, we, you, me, 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 I, we, I, we, you, me, you, me, I, 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 we, 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 you, you, me, me. What does it mean? Who are you to me? Who am I to you? Who are you to me? Who am I to you? Who are you to me? Who am I to you? Who are you to me? Who am I to you? I don't know, I don't know, I know, I know, I know, I don't know, I don't know, I know, I don't know, I know, I don't know. Where's my voice? Where's my voice? Where's my voice? 
Softer, softer, but keep playing, keep playing, softer, keep playing. And softer, keep playing, softer, keep playing. Allow yourself to listen to the sounds in the room. Listen to my voice. Notice where you are in your body. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. We can notice a difference in the room. Everyone's really grounded in their power. Um, 
And the story has a mid beginning, middle, and end. And just quickly uh, seeing the I and the we, and you and me, and then sort of letting go of identity. And I think the place that we eventually got to is this place where we free ourselves of identity and we come more fully into our power. And when we come fully into our power, we feel more connected. Um, so that's sort of the drum arc of the drum journey. Um, you can share afterwards. We usually do a whole long discussion afterwards, but uh, we don't have the time. And I'm going to go into um, a little bit of a talk. Um, but that's sort of the arc. What's wonderful about these drum journeys, they have a beginning, middle, and end, like a movie, like a story. Uh, and so there's a real healing that takes place or a real awakening or something that happens that tunes you into something more deeper about yourself and, and the people around you. Uh, through my story, I like to share how responsibility changed my I into we. Uh, I started playing the drums when I was three years old. My first performance was playing with Buddy Rich's band when I was six years old. Um, and thus began my, really my relationship with uh, responsibility in the sense of as the musician, the artist, uh, connecting with an audience in, in a, a venue like that for the first time and what that feeling and experience was like and what we connected and communicated with during that performance. Uh, around 12 years old, I was on the third biggest tour in the world. I was playing in front of five to 25,000 people a night. And that experience allowed me to really be able to work with a tremendous amount of energy, which ended up helping me later also in the work that I ended up doing. Uh, but in working with that much energy, learning to embrace a tremendous amount of energy through the drum and be able to work with that energy and really sort of invigorate the audience and take them on a journey, and really a, a journey of consciousness, uh, even just a, as a musician working in a rock band, um, people screaming, but still my intent was taking them on a journey. Uh, then I sort of moved up even further, got involved with Jimi Hendrix, and I uh, recorded with Jimi Hendrix when I was 16 years old. And what I got from him was really finding your crack into the universe. And he, I saw him as an artist that found this crack into the universe and found this incredible source of power, of expression, that really elevated people and changes people's consciousness. And I said, that's what I want to do, you know? Of course, I'm 16 years old, and you think, oh, okay, I'll just do that, you know? Um, but it doesn't necessarily work out that way. Uh, but I did start thinking about that that's where I wanted to go. 18 years old, I toured uh, Europe, and by the time I was 20 years old, I was completely burnt out. And uh, that was the first 20 years of my life. Um, we're going to move on a couple of decades and <laughs> skip certain years. Uh, and I decided I wanted to get back into drumming full time, and I had this epiphany where drumming and psychology came together. And in that moment, I knew that's what I was going to be doing the rest of my life. I didn't know what it was going to look like. I didn't know what it was going to sound like, but I knew that was it. And people always came to me with their problems and ever since I was a little kid, and it was something I was always really interested in. So I started creating these exercises. And the first place I went, because I had an opportunity to volunteer, was at a detention camp working with at-risk youth. And this is a population that I didn't know anything about as far as having any connection with. We started doing these exercises. They started having a powerful experience. And over time, I realized you know, their core issue is abandonment. And um, I had a core issue you know, from a very different place of abandonment. And I realized that's where we met. We met in this place of abandonment. And, um, and then I started working with cancer patients. And from my family history of losing people to cancer, it was a very powerful experience for me. And they started having a healing process that took place, working with cancer patients and using the drums as far as alleviating pain and things like that. Um, and then I had an opportunity to go into an elementary school. And, and I created, I spent four months not getting paid, nothing, every single day was there. And I created an educational program using rhythm. And I discovered the power rhythm as all these kids' scores went through the roof. And there's a particular story I'd like to share. Uh, we had a pullout program. And um, one of the students, his name was Gabriel, and he was a third grader, and he was reading at a first grade level. And he never took a book out of the library, never read out, read out loud in the class, uh, had a lot of shame. And after about two weeks of working with him, he started taking books out of the library. 
after three weeks for the first time he raised his hand to read and he read out loud and afterwards the whole class applauded and people were patting him on the back saying way to go Gabriel and you can see his self-esteem his chest everything started opening up uh, late at the end of the year he was the most improved student and two years later he graduated with honors and it realized for me it was a powerful statement about uh, what you can do to change internally the mechanism in a child, you know, and so that they, they switch, the switch goes off. Um, the switch of shame goes off and the switch of empowerment comes on. And there is a science behind this. Uh, the science is there's energy, thought, and emotion. And with a lot of students, the energy is either moving much faster than thought. You see that with hyperactive kids, ADHD, kids who are very, very nervous, and, and the energy is moving faster than thought, or energy is moving much slower than thought. You see it with different forms of depression. You see it with kids who have given up on the learning process, and they have so much shame. And through rhythm, and a particular way of using rhythm, you can align energy, and thought, and emotion so that it's always moving forward, meaning nothing backs up into their shame. And so it's a very powerful tool to use. And, um, and so, and the other piece of that is that there's a, a study that was done at a Berkeley University that showed that neurons in the brain work better as a group when there's a beat. So neurons oscillate at certain tempos. When they connect with other neurons that oscillate at the same tempo, it doesn't matter where they are, they will connect. And this way, you have all these neurons in the brain. It's like an internal community that are connecting each other, that are finding each other through tempo, through rhythm. They're connecting each other. And by using rhythm, you could also unleash all this energy, which connects the conscious to the unconscious mind. You have the brain to the body. So you have all these internal relationships happening. And what we want to do is uh, basically put a mirror, right, and then reflect it out into the outer community. And there are people in our society through history that have done that. For example, when Gandhi basically freed all those millions of people from, and gained independence from India, I believe rhythm was there. When Martin Luther King gave his I, I Have a Dream speech, I believe rhythm was there. And when Nelson Mandela, after 27 years, walked out of prison, I believe rhythm was there. And as we did in the drum, you can turn I into we, and we can build this global community together, one beat at a time. Thank you.